doing action. I like to challenge myself each time out. I just try to take everything I've learned from bad boys on of how to make it better, make it different. I am always trying to put my cameras in very unique places and give the audience a much more unique view. You know, example is when Shane, a character named Shane, arrives at the farm. I had this vision in my mind after I used the Phantom Flex, which is a very, very high-speed digital camera. I realized that your sense of time and space get warped. and The human mind can't track what is the correct time. And if you start throwing three or four things at, at, at an audience in the screen, their brain can't compute, oh, that car should be going faster or slower, or that grass is going too fast. It just, it just starts to warp in their mind. And I knew that it would be an extremely cool shot to have a car on a crane have it traveling, and I wanted someone to run into the front tire. Going like this. And I've got a wonderful crew. A lot of them have been with me 16, 17, 18 years. But my crew was like, how are you going to do this shot? What, I, I don't get it. We kept having meetings about it. I said, guys, I don't want to have any more meetings about it. Enough talk. Just get me three air mortars, get me a crane that can move the car 10 feet, and make a very, very soft foam tire so the stuntman can't hit his face very hard. So when we did this shot, I just told the stuntman to run hard at this tire, hit his face. The secret sauce, there's always secret sauce in my shots, the glasses and the goop, the goop in his mouth. He just had to spit it out to make it look like he's getting whacked in the face. And then finally, when I showed them the Phantom Flex at speed, at very high, high rate of speed, maybe shot it. I'm not going to give that. I'm not going to give it to future directors. They'll figure it out on their own. Oh. But I showed the crew, and they're like, oh, I get it. I get it. That's great, Jack. You know, I've done enough big scale movies where there's a point when it's just, here's the menu of what I need to make my shots. I will tell you on the day, this is how we're going to do it. And let's cut this meeting short, because I have other meetings to attend to. <laughs> You watch the, the, the rhythm of the movie, it's a slower burn, it's a slower build. Uh, there's not a lot of wham, bam action right at the front, intentionally. Uh, and then when they get on that spaceship, there's a series of big set pieces all in a row. It just, it keeps going. We were the first movie in the world to use the IMAX 3D digital camera. And it really, when you see that cable sequence, especially the way it was meant to be shown, which is in IMAX, Whoa. Oh my God. you really get this just sensation when you walk out on the cables. Don't look down, OK? So what I try to do with my action is I will go from the very big epic shot to the small, minute face shots of Tessa freaking out on the cables, literally just having a semi-panic attack, uh, just from sheer fear of heights. I'm not moving! I'm going back to the ship! My style is to do something small like that, and then you just, bam, you whack them with the two F-22s passing by. Oh, shit. If you watch through the style of the movie, that's kind of what I'm doing with my action. In beating out the script, uh, it became apparent very early on that I was zeroing in on a major city that had big green lush hills next to a big urban building area. And that leaves you basically with Rio, Hawaii, Oahu, and Hong Kong. Visually, I'd been to Hong Kong, and I've always thought it was a stupendous place to shoot a movie. Climb, climb, surround them. I had seen that apartment building in Hong Kong, and it's just, I knew right when I saw it, I want to do an action scene that's very parkour down this crazy, crazy place. I think there's 30,000 people that live in this place. To do this scene, we had to reconstruct a lot of the upper roofs just for weight. We should put a camera while they're getting that handheld. They're going to throw a bunch of stuff off. We'll see it all fall towards us. Once we strengthen the roofs, you then have two the actors that are scared of heights. That's a whole other issue you got to deal with. I wouldn't do it, but um, <laughs> I've had a lot of experience dealing with actors like that because generally they're afraid of heights. I'm afraid of heights, but you basically get in their face and say, what are you doing? You're going to get up there. These guys are pros. Get on a cable. Let's go. All right. Everyone ready? Here we go. And roll cameras. And unbeknownst to me, 
When you shoot in Hong Kong, they have a whole different style. They are not allowed to lock down anything. No roads, no streets, nothing. And I'm not used to that at all. But an example, a car chase, this is how they do it in Hong Kong. We're shooting on the roads. We would have stunt people that would sort of block, slow the freeway, as we have other stunt people now in a street that's kind of clear from our our, our, our group slowing the traffic in a way. We're, we're in a van with a door open here and a back door open there, and two cameramen, handheld, a lot of it's handheld, and just kind of raw. Get out of the way. And it is fun shooting like that, I gotta tell you. Go, go, go. There's a lot of humanity there, and they don't uh, stop for anything. With so much humanity in Hong Kong, we had to supplement Hong Kong by using Detroit. All right, let's go again. I've been to Detroit so many times. I was one of the first guys to shoot in Detroit before it was hip to shoot in Detroit, going all the way back to Transformers 1, even the island before that. And that's where we were able to do a lot of big, big physical stuff. We used it for the massive car poles and the big drops because I'm still an old school director and using a lot of very real effects. I just like moving big things very close to the camera to keep it real. In the midst of this big dropping section, we call it the backwards drive, we tried this brand new Austrian robotic camera. We're the first to use it. Amir, my amazing DP, found it. It was a very complicated rig. It's a robotic arm that might have seven different axes. When you look at the backwards drive, you can see we come through the skylight. We are looking in the back seat. We kind of pull around Mark. And Mark looks outside the window. Whoa! That's actually happening, not blue screen. That's all happening when they're really driving and stuff is going on and extras are running around. And again, going from the big epic action outside to the stuff right inside with our people. Oh my on, I wanted to really get them inside. We call it the noodle shop, where they drive inside. So now we don't have to see the massive world outside. It's a way of being more cost effective, but still keeping the fear in the audience's minds of what's happening outside as this ship is pulling these, these soup ladles and the car pulling up through the roof and whatnot. Car! Right behind you. I knew when I got to the silo scene that I wanted to make it just about our cast and the three of them. The three of them that started in this little innocent place called Texas, and it was those three that were gonna help with Optimus and Bumblebee. They were gonna help take down Lockdown. So I wanted a very close quarter kind of fight and everyone doing kind of the one thing that the, the best of what they, like Jack being the driver, Mark having that alien gun, and Nicola doing anything to save her dad. There's also the imaginary action. On these days where there's nothing in the frame, and I mean nothing. Two, one, fire. These are days where the crew just goes by my lead and I'm like, I try to explain this is what's going on. I've got a previs for it. Four seconds of transformation, and then he starts running. I'm telling the camera operators this is how long you want to pan. Pan. This is how long it's one, two, three, four, five. He punches on two. So you're panning, okay? Believe it or not, it's as simple sometimes as gravity. That's why I have a tennis ball. Throw it up and you count how many seconds it takes to fall down. That will sometimes give us the, the hang times of certain characters flying through the air just to get it right, physics wise. It's an odd tool, but believe it or not, it really works. These movies are extremely fun to do. You're showing the true goodness of the Autobots, good fighting evil, with good, hardcore, fun action. That's what I keep trying to do with these movies time and time again.